And welcome to our first Sunday in November and All Saints Day. A lot of wonderful things happening today. I'm so glad you're here with us. Let's take a look at some of our upcoming events and activities as found in the back of your bulletin. And it is such a big week for us because we do have the Christmas Bazaar coming up on Saturday. So there's a lot of things that are in motion for this. Marcia, can you uh, guide us through? Good morning. Good morning. Um, all right, today's the deadline to order Rent's famous pumpkin pies. So if you haven't ordered one yet, the slips are in the back. We have flyers available. Uh, if you have a community place, you can help advertise the bazaar. That would be a big help. Take one of our flyers. I'm going to pass these sheets out. It's 10 things you can do to help with our bazaar. Uh, so things maybe you thought about or didn't think about, but we can use all the help we can get, especially Wednesday evening. Uh, Wednesday evening at quarter of eight, uh, the scouts are going to help us set up all the tables in the hall. So we can use a little muscle to help lift the tables and place them where they're going to be. Uh, that would be a, a tremendous help. So far, I'm the only one who signed up, and I don't have that much muscle, so <laughs> I could do some help. Um, we have the schedule as far as if you want to drop in, uh, drop things off, or if you want to hang around and help us price items, arrange items, uh, whatever. And then also the day of uh, the bazaar, we can certainly use help with people being cashiers. Um, Lee and Tom and Nevea are going to cover our raffle, uh, selling our raffle tickets for us. So um, we should be good after church today. We have fellowship. I'm sure you'll talk about your presentation. Um, and then if you can hang around, we're going to be making some candy for the bazaar and we have a couple other pro projects um, that people can help with. So that includes getting stuff out of the attic. So men, we need some help or tall people. Tall people. Okay, thank you. We'll take one and pass. And yes, we do have fellowship afterwards today. So please join us next door. During that, I'm going to give you a short presentation of my latest vacation off to Iceland. I set the whole thing up because I went out there to see Northern Lights. So I'm going to talk about the Northern Lights, show you some pictures, videos I've taken. Judy said I need to add some other things of Iceland in there. So I found a few slides of Iceland I could pop in as well. So we'll, we'll do that. That shouldn't take more than three, four hours tops. <laughs> Less than a thousand slides, really. So kind of thing. Um, November 5th, of course, is the time to vote. And let us know if you need help getting to the poll. We are a polling place over at Deverline Hall. So keep that in mind. Next Sunday, Consistory Veterans Recognition New Member Service. It's another big Sunday for us. We will be recognizing the veterans during that time. We are also going to be bringing Joyce Wade into our church as a new member. Oh, she's been here with us for a long time, but we're going to make it official. And it's also Joyce's birthday next Sunday. So that kind of makes it extra special. And speaking of birthdays, it's Kitty's birthday today. So let's sing happy birthday to her.
Bible study on the 17th and community dinner on the 22nd, 27th, just looking forward, Wednesday night before Thanksgiving at Coventry Church, we'll be having our Thanksgiving service. We'll talk more about that and have a flyer back there for you next week. Any other events that need to be brought to our attention? Other activities, events? The story of a little boy who attended church that had these beautiful stained glass windows. And he was told that the windows contained pictures of St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, St. Peter, St. Paul and others. And one day he was asked, what is a saint? And he replied, a saint is a person whom the light shines through. And you know, I think that's as good a definition as any that we're going to find. And today, we are all saints of Christ's church. And we're going to look at how we can keep that light shining through us as we continue to go on. And as we live our lives, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please rise for our call to worship. We come together today seeking the Lord. We seek the Lord so that our lives might be touched and made whole. We seek the Lord, for in Christ we see that God first sought us. We seek the Lord because it is in Christ that we have true life. Let us sing and give praise to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us join in our hymn for all the saints, number 299.
draw near with a true heart, confessing our sins unto God our Father, so that we might be granted forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord, we often chase after the things of the world, thinking they will give us peace, joy, and life, instead of seeking your will for us. Too often we have let the opinions of others be more important to us than your word. Forgive us, Lord, and help us refocus our lives for you and the living message of the cross. In Christ we pray. Amen. To all who seek forgiveness through confession of sin and the commitment to change, God responds with mercy and with grace. Ever and always, God welcomes us home to live with joy in the world and to live with hope for the time ahead. Let us now walk in truth, finding the freedom as we celebrate Christ's life and as we rely on on the Spirit's power. These things we can all do by the grace of God. Amen. Please be seated. And will the children come forward at this time? It is so good to see you guys, and I love those smiles. Today, we have All Saints Day. So what I want to do is I want to talk about noticing other people. Okay, so look out there in the congregation. Take a good look at everybody. What do you notice about them? What's the first thing you notice? Or a smile. Oh, I like that. I like that. They're all boys and girls. They're all boys and girls? Okay. <laughs> and they're all different. And they're all different. We look at people and we see different things, don't we? Sometimes we notice their hair first, or we might notice their eyes. I think noticing their smiles are a really great way to start. I think that's a really important part. They want to smile, aren't they? Yeah, how could they not? How could they not? The things we should notice about people, but it's not just the way people look. One of the things we should also notice about people is how they act. And that's important too. St. Paul thought it was so important that he told people in his letters it's important to imitate him. You know what the word imitate means? What does imitate mean? The copy. Okay, great. The copy. All right, go ahead and imitate me. Okay, very good. Very good. Yeah, that's imitate, right? That's not exactly what St. Paul was saying. He's saying, you don't have to imitate my hairstyle if you don't want to, all right? Probably not the best idea. But it's not imitating a hairstyle or the way I walk or the way I dress. He's talking about imitating the way he acts. But not just the way he acts, the way Christ acts. That's what you want to imitate, and St. Paul is doing his best to imitate Jesus. So, what does that mean to imitate Jesus? <coughs> it means we love other people. It means we forgive others, right? It means that we praise God. Those are things that we need to do to imitate Christ and to bring into our lives. Did you notice I keep calling him St. Paul? He's considered a saint. You know who else is a saint? St. Peter. St. Peter, yeah, he's definitely a saint. The others? 
St. George? Didn't he fight a dragon? <laughs> you know who else is a saint? You are. If you don't believe me, you go ask your parents. <laughs> okay? Actually, everybody in church, all those people out there, they're all saints. In the church, we are all saints because we all try to imitate or copy Christ. We all try to help each other. We all try to love each other. We all try to be forgiving when things don't work out. So that's what we want to do. We want to try to imitate Christ. And that's the best way to become a saint. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the children here today. Please bless and guide them, protect them always in all they do. We thank you for their presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please rise for our hymn, O Savior for the Saints, number 298. <laughs> Chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, 
I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, direct our thinking, our speaking, and our hearing, that we may more fully know you, and let your word be our lamp in all darkness and in doubt. Amen. Last week we had Halloween, and October 31st, and the calendar is called, astronomically, a cross-quarter day. That's our fancy word meaning it's the halfway mark in the season of autumn. To the ancient Celts, they celebrated this day as the beginning of their autumn, not midway. And they celebrated with a ritual that we've come to know as Halloween. But actually the name Halloween comes from what we are celebrating today, All Saints Day. All Saints Day is November 1st, but the evening before would be All Hallows Eve. Hallow means holy or sacred. Hallowed be thy name. Just think of like Christmas Eve comes right before Christmas. It's the evening before Christmas. All Hallows Eve, which they changed to Halloween, comes right before All Saints Day. The idea being, you know, if you can make it through Halloween, you get to be a saint. On All Saints Day, we do celebrate a miraculous transformation. It's the day that we fragile, frail, and oh-so-fallible humans are recognized as saints. St. Paul's opening address to the church at Philippi reads, To all the saints, who are in Philippi, or his message to the Corinthians, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Every time the word saint is used in the New Testament, it refers to all the members of the church. So the designation of saint is not reserved for a few Mother Teresa types. Saint is an address that encompasses everybody, all the members of the church. And boy, does that thought make us a bit uncomfortable. First, in our heads we like to think that the designation of saint refers to only a very, very small select, elite group of individuals thankfully all long dead, who accomplish stupendous healings and feats of faith far beyond the capabilities of us ordinary sit-in-the-pew type folks. But actually, this lets us off the saint hook quite nicely. In fact, the church made these saints into such otherworldly beings that a whole side industry and in reliquaries became hugely popular. A relic, of course, was something personally connected to a saint. It could be a piece of clothing, an item of jewelry, maybe a treasured book that they had. But far more often, relics were actual pieces of the saint's body, a bone, a lock of hair, dried blood in a vial, a finger or a toe. I remember my dad telling me that he was in Rome and he went into such a shop and inquired about obtaining a piece of a bone fragment looking down off the uh, list of saints. Yeah, that one. I'd like a bone of that one. That guy went onto the computer, typing furiously, looking up, and said, I'm so sorry, but all his bones have been taken. 
but we are expecting a new order of them in next month. <laughs> On our bulletin insert, we recall and remember, we reflect, we respect those who have joined the church eternal in just the last two years. These are those deceased who faithfully attended, regularly and generously gave their contributions of time and money, and whose membership in the church is without question. Why is it? that we only want to bestow the role of saint on those men and women of faith who have passed away. Could it be as the poet writes, to dwell above with saints we love, that will be grace and glory. To live below with saints we know, well, that's another story. All Saints Day is not just about recalling great spiritual leaders and teachers who have gone ahead. All Saints Day is a day to dedicate ourselves anew to help increase the number of saints in our church. In short, we become the saints, or more generally, the church itself. The question is, how do we do that? Those Albert Schweitzer who once said, a man does not have to be an angel in order to be a saint. John Bunyan's classic work, Pilgrim's Progress, were introduced to two characters, Christian and Hopeful. The two of them are drawing near the river of death, and as they reach the river, they're met by two shining figures whose raiment shines like gold, whose faces shine as the light. And these two shining figures are able to lead Christian and hopeful as they emerge from the river of death and go into the celestial city. These shining figures are not angels. Rather, they are the saints of God shining as lights in the world of darkness, and of sin. That's who we're to be. Shining lights, helping the wanderer find his or her way home. Take a moment and look at your neighbor. See the friends, spouses, siblings, parents, children, saints that reside in our congregation. Our power, our life, our, our transformation from sinfulness to saintliness can only come from Christ alone. It's only as we respond to Christ's call with faith and we follow through with Christ's directed action that we take our place among the saints. Today's text, Jesus calls out to a tree perching publican, Zacchaeus, come down. When the rich tax collector follows the director of Jesus and clambers down the sycamore, he climbs back into the skin of Abraham, the son of Abraham. All it takes to transform Zacchaeus from sinner to saint is to come down. When Jesus first spied Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and then James and John as they were fiddling around with their fishing nets, he called out to them, follow me. All it took to transform these simple fishermen from saint to sinner was for them to stop their business as usual lives and begin in fumbling, fallible ways to follow Jesus. Even when it seemed too late, when Jesus' best friend had been in his tomb for three full days, Jesus cried, Lazarus, come out. All it took to transform Lazarus from death to life was obedience as he rose up and went from darkness to light. Consider the following. It's a young man who had been reported killed in action the report, however, was false. 
and he came home from a prisoner of war camp. His family, his buddies, even his girlfriend had mourned him as dead. And then with time, moved on. You can imagine that his sudden reappearance was disconcerting to say the least. His girlfriend was engaged to marry someone else. Moreover, he didn't seem like the boy who had gone off to war. He was different. Yes, he was thin and he was haggard and even a bit haunted looking, but that wasn't it. Because he was also now a bit mature, self-possessed, and most astonishingly, happy. He hadn't smiled much as a kid, rarely joked. Now he's witty, he's cheerful almost all the time. A quiet kid had become an outgoing adult man. He didn't fit into the patterns of relationships that he had left behind. Quite the contrary. His happiness and maturity were a bit unsettling. We expected him to be one way, and he was totally different. He went and he congratulated his former girlfriend on her upcoming marriage. He shook hands cordially with the fiance and wished them all the best. There's something wrong with him, everybody said. His family went to the priest, and the priest even concurred. There does seem something off, he said. He has risen from the dead, and now, now he acts like a saint. Why is it? Why is it that severe hardship has to cripple us psychologically and emotionally? Couldn't it just as well transform our lives for the better? It is said that the creed of a true saint is to make the best of life and also to make the most of it. No matter where we are in our path, no matter what we're doing, what we're currently going through, as Robert Louis Stevenson observed, saints are sinners who keep on going. We are the saints of Christ's church. We're forgiven, we're filled by Christ's indwelling love, and we're called to outflowing service. What action will you take as you take on your role as saint? What is your saintly calling? What steps can you start to take today to be bringing that call into action? God accepts us as we are, but once we turn to Christ, we are to seek to live just as he lived, love as he loved, forgive as he forgave. We need to be mindful not to have a, a mushy kind of faith that says, yeah, everything's all right, Jesus loves me, doesn't matter really what I do with my life. I can go ahead living for myself as if I'm the only one on earth that really matters. We can be too often like the little boy who says to his father, hey, let's play darts. All throw, and no matter where it lands, you say wonderful. <laughs> All too often, it's the kind of attitude we bring to God. Tell us that we're wonderful. Tell us that we're accepted, forgiven, loved. But don't tell us that we need some changes to be made in our lives. Let's remember those important words from Max Licato. God loves us just as we are. But he loves us too much to leave us that way. He wants us to be like Jesus. Who are the saints around the throne of God? Everybody on earth is a candidate for sainthood. None of us are worthy of it. But because of what Christ has done on our behalf, it comes to us as a free gift. Once it's received, however, we're to join the holy company seeking to bring light to a world of darkness through lives that will reflect the glory of Christ. Amen.
All Saints Day means we have something special we call secret saint. Think of it like a secret Santa. That's a secret saint, really, because we're all saints. So here's how this works. In the back, you're going to find a basket. You're going to find some pieces of paper. They look Christmassy with a little sled in the bottom. And if you want to participate, it's not mandatory, but if you would like to, write your name on a piece of paper, fold it up, not 18 times, as once or twice will do, and put it in the basket. And right now, that's all you got to do. Now, we're going to have that basket back there. We'll have things open for you. Participation is voluntary. And we'll have that back every Sunday for this month. Now, on December 1st, our first Sunday in Advent, what will happen is you're going to go back into that basket and you're going to pick out a piece of paper with a name on it. If it's yours, fold it back up, put it back in, and grab somebody else's. Or just get yourself a really nice gift, all right? But no, pick somebody else's out, take a look at it, and you're going to get a gift for that person, nothing more than $15. You're going to wrap it. You're not going to tell the person your name yet. You will put that on the gift, and we'll put it under our Christmas tree. And then the last Sunday right before Christmas Eve, after the service, we'll have some time for you to go up and get your gifts and to talk to that person. That'll be December 22nd. We'll exchange the gifts then. There's something else, though. When you get that person's name, you can get them a gift, wrap it up, but also put in a note as to why they're important to you and what they mean. We're all saints, and we're all here to help each other, and that's a really important part of that process. So feel free to participate right in the back. That's for our secret saints. I'll leave instructions back there for you, too. Before we get to our concerns, are there any other joys that need to be brought to our attention? Lee, please. Sure. Um, on behalf of Nevaeh, she's working, she's not here. But the period yes. poverty Thank you. box is overflowing. It's enormous. Wow. And this small congregation is so very generous. And I just want to thank everybody for it. The box will be empty today, and we'll bring it back next Sunday if anybody wants to add to it because the week is entirely too busy to leave it there. We have too much happening. November 10th is the deadline. That's next. Thank you week. for bringing that up. So thank you, thank you, thank you on her behalf. Wonderful, wonderful. That's great. Thank you for supporting that. Anything else? Other joys? Had some really nice clear nights. We could use some rain, I guess, somewhere along the way. But, uh, we can't all the days and the hiking and going out there, it's just beautiful. The fall colors are just amazing. It's a wonderful time to just celebrate this beautiful world that God has made. Anything other? Other joys? Nora? Well, I just looked at the stocks for Sue, and my goodness, for November, whatever second it is, that's been amazing. So nicely done, folks. It is Socks for Sue month, and you can bring in socks and also underwear with or without starch, okay, you know, it's <laughs> fine one way or the other. But we need both, and my gosh, for day one, that is pretty incredible. Um, it's such a wonderful, wonderful program. I mean, hope to see that thing overflowing, as it's already doing. And that'll be all month, so yeah, that is wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? And don't forget our fellowship after church and the auroras and all that good stuff. Prayer list. Okay. We have people down on this thing. Um, Mike Cyberling and Mike the Turk, especially, keep them in your prayers right now. Mike is back home, and we're very grateful for that right now. So that is a very positive thing going down. Saw Greg on Thursday, and uh, he was dressed in a Halloween costume. So that was wonderful to see him uh, moving around with things. And Bob Meschke, 
Um, got a chance to see him the other day. Would love to hear from you, phone calls especially. Um, just wants a chance to chat with you. So feel free to put him on your list for that. And of course, Ant, keep him in your prayers always. And Sharon, especially as we're going down the list here. Um, she's still working on some of her issues with that, but she's back home. She had a quick trip to the hospital yesterday. But she's back and hopefully uh, working through with these things. Anybody else that needs to be put on their prayer list? We just, um, first of all, good morning. Uh, last month I had the opportunity to go to visit with my aunt and uncle, uh, Steve and Ann Haig in uh, Cape Town. They are missionaries there, and uh, my uncle is getting, uh, hopefully, through a battle of throat and cancer. Um, and uh, you know, they work in a uh, rehab facility outside one of the largest, uh, for lack of a better term, slums in the world. There's about two million people kind of packed in a relatively small area without running water or flushable toilets. So I guess uh, I'm asking for prayers uh, for Steve that he recovers physically. Uh, and I also ask for prayers that they are able to kind of uh, main maintain you know, faith and hope in the face of such kind of communal suffering. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? In your bulletin, the insert today is a people from our church, our saints who have passed the last two years. We want to remember them today as we remember them always. But especially here on the Saints Day, I'm going to say their name, I'm going to light a candle. I want you to take a moment and just reflect, just visualize them and think of the wonderful things that they've done for you as they were here as members, as they were saints of this church. Jim Bittler. Nancy Bittler. <laughs> Sue Ottinger. Was a Munzinger. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, O God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, whether in wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses. Wherever your name was lifted and adored, we give you thanks, O God, for hands that are lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-handed or steel-booted, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark on the earth for you, for us, and for our children to come. Lord, we can so often remember the Christians who moved mountains by earthly standards. Please help us to pray and remember those who fulfilled their mission of calling behind the scenes. We've been blessed by such a long history of the church that many can go unforgotten. Please help us to learn from the lives of those who didn't earn much spotlight. Let us glean from their humility and servitude. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love as we take on the mantle of saints for your church. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, the ushers wait upon you for the gifts of the morning offering.
O oh God, as the church is warmed by your love, and lightened by the offerings of these plates, may it rise to new levels of openness and service, and may these offerings enable us to quench the world's thirst with a new wine of peace and compassion. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of communion, Break Now the Bread of Life, number 321. service of communion, we are using the green found in your hymnal. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing. We thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. <coughs> we thank you for all that sustains life, for all the people in every generation who have given themselves to your will and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. Therefore, with the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. <laughs>
Let us pray. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to your service on behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts, and on us. Strengthen your universal church, that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace, that is able to make all things like new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives, so that we may know you as the Holy One, with Christ and the Holy Spirit, lives forever. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. Please be seated. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and having blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after he had supped, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Come, for all things are now ready. body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. 
Amen. The blood of Christ, which is shed for you, take and drink. Amen. Please rise and let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Now send us forth to be your people in the world. Grant us strength to persevere and resist the evil and follow Christ's example in our service to others. Let us join in our recessional hymn, Jesus Still Lead On, number 446.
It's a good day to praise God, a good day to be aware of our blessings, a good day to recall how others have guided you and me toward the mystery of God, a good day to bless others on their way toward holy living. May the peace of God sustain you always. Amen. Amen.